I, you, you want to hear something like real weird? I'm going to tell you something real weird about me. So like I never had any background in finance ever. You know, like I actually what I did was I ran a nonprofit for uh, kids that were drug addicts. Uh, drug addicts, like teenage boys for years. And uh, I, I just love helping people. And so I never thought in my wildest dreams, this is what I would be doing. You know, like I actually did this thing where uh, back in 2008, where I had like made fun of people that were in finance, made this little video because it was like something I would never be interested in, never be involved in. It was right when the financial crisis was going on. And then like years later, this is what I do. And it's like so weird because I, I knew nothing about any of this stuff. And just over the last like four years, really like just reading every single day and learning about it. And it's like, it really starts to open your eyes, you know, and you really like get empowered when you start to know what money is and, and how it works, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So true. Cause it is yeah. so intimidating, especially for a girl, like a woman, like it's, yeah. it's not something that people really expect you to be interested in or really know anything about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. BitSwap is the hottest new way to trade tokens. Crawling all the top decentralized exchanges, BitSwap gets you the very best price and value for your trades. BitSwap is changing the game. Try it now at BitSwapDex.io. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the largest crypto channel in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in cryptocurrency. If you like money and crypto, make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this video, we're beginning a weekly series where we're going to be walking someone through what it's like to know very little about cryptocurrency to hopefully by the end of this series becoming an expert. So let's go ahead and jump right into week one. I actually found out about you through my partner watching YouTube videos on the TV at home <laughs> and I heard your voice in the background and I was like, who is this guy who's like so animated and actually makes it really interesting to actually learn about crypto? I just want to know more. I just want to know the basic things and share that with people. So yeah, and we get a lot of, you know, requests to do very beginner friendly content and try to understand on a basic level what cryptocurrency is, what Bitcoin is, what altcoins are, what's an NFT, you know, what is DeFi. So we thought this was a really good opportunity uh, to kind of just do something different than we've ever done on the channel. And so, okay, well, let's let's just get started. So, yeah, I think that money is probably one of the most misunderstood things in the world. And the, the reason for that is because we're just kind of fed what money is, right? Like you think of paper, you take for granted what that paper represents. And, you know, money is a much bigger concept than just paper or coins. And you go back all throughout history and you see, of course, money started with bartering. Uh, you know, you just trade one thing for another without having a medium of that exchange. Really what money actually is on a fundamental, you know, very basic level is it's a form of communication. It's explaining to someone, hello, I would like that. I have something that I value equally to what you have, and then you make that trade. But understanding the, mon the monetary system in the United States, and especially, you know, across the world in general, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, for instance, uh, you know, is a really big thing to kind of unpack. I, I think, though, one of the, the biggest things to understand uh, about money is the difference between money today and money, I guess, in previous, you know, uh, you know civilizations, right? Fiat currency is paper money. And what fiat literally means is it's paper money or a, a representation of money that's not backed by anything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, like when Ross said to me, he's like, why do you have your money? Sit? It makes no sense for your money to just be sitting in the bank. Having money that is not backed by anything is really kind of crazy if you think about it. So what happened is in 1971, the United States was taken uh, off of the gold standard. Uh, that means that before 1971, all dollars were backed one-to-one. -one. People may have heard of like Fort Knox, you know, that had all the gold in the United States. And that was what our money was based on. Well, Richard Nixon took us off of that gold standard. It, what happened in 1971 to now is absolutely insane. There's no accountability for printing paper money. Like, when I was in fifth grade, I remember asking my teacher, you know, I said, what stops us from just printing money? And the fifth grade teacher, you know, uh, Miss Smithyman, that was my fifth grade teacher. Uh, she told me the same thing that every teacher in history is supposed to tell you, which is you can't just keep printing money. And yet they do. 
right? I mean, all around the world with the pandemic, stimulus money, they're just printing it out of control. Okay, so this is a page called WTF happened in 1971.com. And it's a lot of really cool charts. And on each one of these charts, it's going to show you the red arrow here pointing to 1971 on the chart. Uh, so there's so many of these on here that it's really hard to kind of uh, go over every single one. But some of these are really significant. So if we come down here, we look at real GDP per capita. And you guys see, boom, 1971 goes straight up into the air. Um, this one right here is, this one's really interesting. This is a 1971 cost of living. Now, I don't know if, you're, if your grandpa used to tell you stories about how much stuff cost back in the day. Well, your grandpa could get a Coke for a nickel or, or a loaf of bread for a dime. Do you think the dime or the Coke today is worth more money? No. No. Like, it's not more valuable. There's nothing about Coke that, like, today is better. A lot of people would say that the old Coke was better. There's nothing about bread today that's, like, way better than bread in the 1940s. And yet, the cost has gone out of control. It's obviously because of inflation. Um, but if you look at these prices and the, the, a new house for $25,000, the average income was $10,000 a year, and you could live on that. Now that's well below poverty. A new car was $3,500. Um, you look at food, for instance, uh, milk, a dollar seventeen per gallon, um, uh, bacon at 80 cents per pound. This is really where you start getting into some of the crazy stuff. Cumulative inflation from 1913 to 2015. And you look at this chart and it just goes, you know, it, it seems to self-correct. But after, uh, you know, 1940, uh, around World War II's end, uh, it started increasing. And then look what happens to the, the amount of inflation after we got taken off the gold standard. That's pretty That's crazy. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one here, look at this one. This is a consumer price index. And you, it really just starts to become very clear that what we did in 1971, taking us off this gold standard, it basically ruined money for eternity, basically. Uh, it ruined the dollar specifically uh, for eternity. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share here. The, the thing is, is when governments have the ability to print money, they're going to just continue to print the money. It's never going to stop because there's nothing keeping them, uh, you know, there, there's nothing keeping them from doing it. And we've seen the amount of dollars just go absolutely parabolic. 30% of all dollars in the world uh, of U.S. dollars that have flowed around the world, they were printed in the last one year. That's insane. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, so... When it comes to what crypto is and, and what Bitcoin is, it offers something different in uh, history. You look at the Romans and you look at the Greeks uh, and you'll see that they did the same thing that we're doing. And now, you know, Europe has just came out and said they're going to go print money out of control. Uh, like if, if you were in debt, if you had a really big debt, like let's say you were a big, you know, you had student loan debt, you had a, a big car payment, you had a really high mortgage or a really high rent payment. Uh, what do you think the solution to that problem for you would be? I'd put it in a try and make money in crypto. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it, it, it certainly wouldn't be to go spend more money, correct? No. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. And that's what the governments do is when they start to get to a point where they, uh, you know, want to get out of debt, they want to spend more money. And that's really counterintuitive. It doesn't seem to make any sense. And we've seen over history that that just simply does not work, uh, but they continue to do it. The, the Romans and the Greeks, they did this exact thing, except for instead of printing money out of control, like we do with paper money, uh, they took their uh, gold and silver coins and they would actually cause inflation by removing the actual amount of gold and silver that was packed inside of the coins. So it started out where they were 100% gold, and then by the end, it would get to where they were less than 1% actual gold, and that's how they made their kind of coin supply continue on. Uh, in, until it was worthless, similarly to what we're seeing, uh, you know, it, after the pandemic. So, so from your perspective, from like the like Australia side of things, um, what have you seen in terms of the like what has happened with your financial system there uh, since the pandemic? We, we were very lucky here. We have yeah. a really amazing, you know, sort of government that takes care of us here. We've um, health insurance, like we, we've got, you know, Medicare, like all of these things. 
but um but now it's starting to sort of level back out but it's still like you know they're still trying to pull all of that money into the economy you know I can still work I can still sort of jump on a plane and go to Melbourne and work and it's great but a lot of people in America in the states are really really suffering because you know they can't they don't have that opportunity no one's going back to work really so one of the effects of out of control money printing uh, is that it's hyperinflation is, is what hits. And we're really scared in the United States that we're going to hit this hyperinflation. You may have seen like in Venezuela, they were hit by hyperinflation a few years ago. Uh, it was so bad that on the street, they would actually make uh, 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 like handbags out of their currency. That's how worthless their currency was. And it's really scary to think about, you know, what would happen if that occurred in the United States? you know, how has the pandemic actually affected crypto? Like if you, if you invested into crypto, where would your money be? Would you be, would you have made a loss? Like what was. Yeah. And, and, and so crypto is this, this all leads us to cryptocurrency, right? Because we have the out of control money printing. We see what happens to currency when it's not backed by anything. Since 1971, we looked at those charts. Uh, they look terrible and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. The pandemic has put all this into kind of on full display. And when it comes to a solution for this, we have to have something that is backed by something that has actual uh, scarcity or rarity, something that has a total cap. Because when governments, when it's left up to them, they'll print, print, print. But with Bitcoin and with cryptocurrency, one of the things that people have seen is that it actually has value because it's what's called deflationary. It's not inflationary like regular currency. Um, And the difference would be with regular currency, uh, we looked at the chart, the value of your money over time goes down. With cryptocurrency, the value of your money goes up. Uh, And there's actually a uh, a Twitter account uh, that uh, shows how much money you would make if you had put your stimulus money into Bitcoin because, I mean, at the time, I think Bitcoin was around uh, $6,000. It went all the way up to $60,000, so maybe about 10 times, so about a 1,000% gain. It sounds like a better uh, use of your money than keeping it in dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How can how can the states just keep printing money, and what does that mean for my dollar that's in the bank? Like if I've got 10 grand in the bank or $1,000 in the bank, if they pump out a trillion dollars tomorrow, what is that actually doing to my money in my account? Really, the people that are getting hurt the most, I don't feel like understand what's actually happening. Uh, but the people that need it the most, they're going to go out and spend it immediately. They're going to get the $1,400. I saw it TikTok the other day, and it was kind of a joke, right? Where the girl said she needed her stimulus check to go get some crab legs. And, you know, like pretty funny. We all love crab legs, right? Doesn't everybody love crab legs, I think? Uh, you know, so I get it, but this is not the kind of money that you want to go and make a purchase of something that you don't need, especially if there are bills that you have to pay or whatever. People get excited about that $1,400. For some people in the United States, for a lot of people in the United States, a $1,400 check is a big deal. And so when they see that much money hitting at one time, they may only get $300 or $400 a week at their job. So $1,400 can be like a whole month for them. And so they see that check and they look at the money and they're like, oh, that's good. I can go get something with that money. People that hold dollars, if you hold dollars, you're getting punished for holding those dollars. The people that are winning right now, they're holding assets. They're holding assets like cryptocurrency. That's what separates Bitcoin from a lot of other, uh, you know, a lot of other things is Bitcoin is an asset, but it's also property. You own that Bitcoin when you buy it, Uh, unless you buy it. You know, there are places you can buy it where, you know, like Robinhood app here in America where you don't actually own it. You can't withdraw it. But for most ways, you're going to buy Bitcoin. You're going to own that asset. So by simply taking your stimulus check and putting that money into an asset instead of holding it in cash, you're going to end up much better off. Your money is getting more worthless over time and assets are going up in value. But the people that can afford assets generally are the people that don't need the stimulus checks. So it's kind of like a a, a circle of punishment where the people that are the lower, you know, economic class in America or across the world, they get punished by the money printing. But the people that already have the money, they're buying assets and they're protecting themselves when the economy does crash. And so, you know, if you just think of supply and demand, right? Supply and demand is the most basic 
uh, rule of economics. If yeah. there's if there's not very much of something and a lot of people want it, it's going to be very valuable. If there's too much of something and people don't want it, it's not going to be valuable. And so when you're looking at assets, they're more on that side of things that are going to be valuable while dollars, they're making more all the time, meaning that there's going to be a higher supply of it but the demand doesn't really change for dollars. Uh, the, there is a population increase, right? There's more people on the planet every every year, but it doesn't match with the level uh, that the the supply is going up. So, it, so in your opinion, that fourteen hundred dollars stimulus check, what if that was you? What would you do with that stimulus check? That's tricky because there are people yeah. that actually need that money for bills to survive. There, there are people yeah. out there that haven't paid their power bill in two months. There's people out yeah. there that haven't been able to work. They live in these states that have been shut down. For those people, it's the system that kind of keeps them down because they get that check. They can't do anything different with it. All they yeah. can do is kind of get out of their current situation. And that's where they never can feel like they can breathe. But for people who don't have to immediately spend that stimulus check, it's going to be way better for you to take that money and to put it into Bitcoin or put it into another top cryptocurrency, not a super speculative one. I would even say it's better to put that money into gold or into the stock market than to keep it in cash. And I can only tell people what I tell my family. So if we go back to, uh, I would say, I think it was over the summer, I was having some conversations with my own family, like my grandparents and my uncle and uh, you know my dad. And they were we were talking about the economy and they said, well, what should we do? And, and they weren't all in on cryptocurrency yet, okay? They all are now, okay? But um, they weren't all in on cryptocurrency. I told my own family, my own flesh and blood, I told them, get out of cash. Anything you can do to get out of cash. So if people want to buy gold with it or stocks, I understand that. I would argue that definitely Bitcoin is, you know, the best proposition though. Yeah, absolutely. And in saying that, I mean, it's it's so easy to just to set like, to say, you know, Bitcoin or whatever, but what are the kinds of platforms that you would actually suggest to people who have no idea what they're doing to get on and to buy those assets? Yeah, for, for Bitcoin, um, you know, there are a lot of different exchanges that you can use to buy it. Uh, the best places in the United States, at least, to buy it uh, is Coinbase, uh, Binance.us, uh, and then also a Cash App is a really good way. If you were to buy Bitcoin on, let's say, PayPal, that gets into the argument of, you know, where, where you can't withdraw your money. You want to be able to withdraw your Bitcoin because, once again, it's all about ownership. You're going to own this Bitcoin and you want to be able to pull it out in case, like, what if the economy crashes, right? If you're still relying on something where you don't own it and you're only making money in U.S. dollars based upon the price going up or down, which is what it is on PayPal, uh, then you're really not in a better situation. You're still dependent upon the dollars. Uh, what about in, in Australia? What is the the top app that you guys use there to uh, to buy cryptocurrency? We use CoinSpot, um, and I didn't find out about CoinSpot. My partner Ross did. He he was like doing all of his research and found you know the best couple of little spots to um, little apps to buy safely yeah. as well. Because I feel like it, you know it's money. Like people are so concerned. They're like what if I put my money into this app and it just all goes, you know, it's that like, there's so many pros and cons to, um, to doing it online. And once it's gone, it's gone. Um, yeah. but it's like, we use coin. I, I find coin spot very, very easy to understand. And it's just great seeing those, seeing those dollars go up. Yeah. So so what was, what was that kind of like when you, the first time that you bought Bitcoin and you watch the prices, like what, what was kind of the uh, awakening moment that you had about Bitcoin? I just, it, it just really, once I started to grasp it a little bit more, like it just, it makes no sense to me now to just have money sitting in my bank account than to have it in crypto. Yeah. Um, and for someone that like, I, I never really grew up with any sort of massive a massive amount of financial understanding like we don't really get it in school i didn't really learn it from my parents so to learn to start learning all of this and sort of how it works is it can feel very overwhelming at times and it's just like what what do you believe or you know what apps do you use or whatever but um the more and more i sort of like grasped an understanding of it it's it it just makes so much sense to have the assets and not the cash yeah yeah and, and i think that's a really good point that you make about uh, you know, once you get it in and you watch it, 
and you're like looking at your money in the bank, you're like, hmm, you know, it's, it's, I always say it's a Trojan horse. I love talking about this. Like I got a lot of my family into cryptocurrency by just giving them free crypto. And yeah. I said, look, <laughs> download this app, it, you know, take this crypto and, and it never fails within a week. They're calling me like, Hey, uh, about this. Because so many people like they just they don't understand Bitcoin. In the next episode, we're going to talk a lot about Bitcoin specifically, what makes it unique, what makes it special, uh, you know, why it's a total counter uh, to our current financial system. Uh, but what happens is, is you give it to them. They don't understand it, but they see the money. They see the fluctuations and they start to get a little interested and then they start wrapping their, their heads around. And I'm sure you've encountered uh, people that you've talked to before because you're excited about, you know, this new world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and, and they didn't really seem to get it. Have you, have you gone through that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was that person when Ross started yeah. talking about Bitcoin, I was like, is that even real? Like, is that still a thing? Like <laughs> I really thought it was just some weird scam. I actually, yeah. that's what I thought was and then you know ross started talking to me about it and giving me an understanding and um it's just it's so in like it's just crazy like it's not it's not fake money it's not f as much as what people might think it is and i know that it is overwhelming it's it, there's so much to learn and it's people putting their money out of their accounts which they've that's all they know in their entire lives yeah. is you know you keep your money in your account you keep it safe like you, you don't send it anywhere you don't buy into these you know fake you know crypto things and um but it's yeah i mean it's so interesting once you start learning about it because i was originally thinking yeah. that you know, i was i was like this isn't real it's not a real thing <laughs> yeah it's, but, um, it, it's frustrating it's frustrating when you talk to somebody that that just doesn't seem to get it never talk to anyone who truly understood bitcoin that wasn't interested in it yeah, absolutely. And I think like it, it's really easy to just. Yeah. Uh, people, they get, they, they like what's comfortable, you know, and yeah. when they start to get outside of that comfort zone, uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel good. And you start realizing like, oh, maybe I've been wrong about a lot of stuff for a long time. Um, and I know I've encountered a lot of people. And, and one thing to me that's always really interesting is, I mean, I've talked people's heads off, you know, for years about this stuff. Uh, you know, first back in 2012, I, you know, told people how excited I was that I made some money off of it. And then when I got all involved in cryptocurrency and started doing this as a full-time job, uh, you know, in early 2018, uh, you know, I still was just telling everybody about it. I was so excited and I was just always crushed when people didn't want to hear more about it. But the more that time goes on, the more I just get it. Like some people just aren't interested. And so it, it, a good way to not get frustrated with people is just send them some free crypto. It doesn't have to be much. I just send them 10 or $20 sometimes, uh, you yeah. know, and, and that's enough to get them interested. I think sometimes people just hear like other people talking about it and how much money they're making. And that's originally how they get interested in, mm -hmm. in finding out more about it. So for all the skeptics out there who actually think, you know, it's, it's a bubble, like it's about to, you know, you can't just have all of this money and, crypto it's going to explode like what's going to happen how is it just keep keep on going up like yeah. what's gonna how is it going to change you know yeah i mean a lot of people believe cryptocurrency is a bubble and bitcoin is a bubble and i would say this back in 2017 uh, everybody was making comparisons to what is called tulip mania right it's the original bubble that occurred uh, over tulip flowers uh, but the thing is is crypto is not a bubble it goes in cycles. So if you look at the stock market, for instance, you have bear markets and bull markets, but they last for uh, an irregular. What's a, what's a bear market? Did you say bear market? A bear market, right, yeah. Bear market and a blue market? Bull market. Bull, bull market. <laughs> you haven't heard of a bear in a bull market. So what does that mean? I, like, I, I've got yeah. no idea what that means. <laughs> so a, a, a bull market means the prices are going up. A bear market means the prices are going down. So it actually has to do with, um, you know, like the way that bulls and bears attack because a bear, when it attacks, it swipes down. So that means the yeah. price is going down. When a bull attacks, it takes its horns and it swipes up. So, you know, that's hilarious. Like, yeah. <laughs> story behind what this means. I, so, you know, sometimes I just take for granted that people know what all this stuff means, you know. When it comes to 
a, a bear or a bull market, it means the prices are going up. So in the stock market, you'll have long periods of years where prices go up over time. We've been in one for many, many years in the United States. Then you'll have random times where it also goes down for many, many years, kind of like, you know, uh, immediately following the financial crisis in 2008 for the stock market here in the U.S. Um, but with cryptocurrency, it's actually more predictable. You actually know when these cycles are coming, and that's all based on uh, what is known. I'm going to really blow your mind here by what's called the Bitcoin halving. And uh, we're going to have to kind of save that for the next episode because that is something that's going to really, you know, when we get into that, is going to determine how the price of Bitcoin moves and really why it moves and how supply and demand is, is built into it. So for people that, that say, though, the Bitcoin is a bubble, as of last weekend, when the price of Bitcoin was at $62,000 or almost $62,000, what do you so think about it? Price of Bitcoin. So if you bought one Bitcoin, right? Yeah, if you bought one Bitcoin, the price would be $62,000 last Saturday. So Bitcoin's been around since 2009. From 2009, any person who had ever bought Bitcoin between 2009 and last Saturday had made money. Wild. Yeah, that's crazy. So next week, we're going to get a lot more into what actually Bitcoin is. We talked a lot about the financial system. We talked a lot about kind of some larger ideas about cryptocurrency. Uh, but next week, we're going to really dive deep into the most simple way to understand uh, Bitcoin. So definitely look forward to having you back on the show uh, next week. Anything you, you want to leave us with? Oh, no, thank you for having me and like, helping me even just understand furthermore what, what you know, crypto is and helping other people as well, because I think it's, it is so daunting, but hearing it from somebody like you who is so animated and very, very well, well educated on this is amazing. So thank you for having me. <laughs> Awesome. Well, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. And if you guys could drop down in the comments below uh, some questions maybe you want us to entertain for next week's episode, make sure to do that. If there's some fundamental things that you may feel like you may not understand, drop those in the comments. But for now, that's all I got. Be blessed. Way out. <laughs> <laughs>